Hello everyone and welcome back to the Blackford Book Club and another volume of my essential film reviews collection. Welcome back everyone and thank you so much for being there. And welcome to my favourite Quentin Tarantino film of all time and considering the vast competition that's quite a statement to make. From 1997 this is Jackie Brown. Based on Elmore Leonard's rum punch I have a prop. Ta -da! Tarantino also wrote the screenplay. This is very much his homage to 1970s cinema and black exploitation films in particular. As he's noted several times, these were the films he grew up on, sneaking into dirty grindhouse cinemas to watch Pam Grier, who he referenced in Reservoir Dogs and a firm teenage favourite. The first Tarantino film to use a standard linear timeline this remains my personal favourite, and considering the love that I have for all Tarantino films, this is high praise indeed. It's my favourite purely because everything is subtle. The comedy is very black, but subtly done in so many distinct ways, and the touches and flourishes of Tarantino are still very evident, as are the flashbacks and the first split-screen narrative. Suffice to say, the characters are rich and detailed, and the screenplay is a joy. And although a homage, it's not overly so, and even subtle in this way too. As with all Tarantino films, the soundtrack from his personal collection is a joy, eclectic, yet often more tender than his previous and future films. The first scene and setup magnifies all of these, and much more. The film is bookended by Across 110th Street by Bobby Womack and is played in full both times. Firstly, it accompanies a rolling shot of Jackie Brown, Pam Greer, as she makes her way hurriedly to an airport departure gate. Early opening credits are rolled with a nod and homage to black exploitation cinema, and as with previous films, the upcoming segments and narrative are titled here, such as Hermosa Beach, California, the city of Carson, and LA International Airport. By the third of these narratives, all main characters have been introduced, and so that's where we'll start. Hermosa Beach, California. Ordell Robbie, Samuel L. Jackson, is a gun-selling gangster, eloquent, cocksure, and determined that nothing and no one will prevent him from an early retirement on his awaited profits. As always, Samuel L. Jackson brings an unlikable character to life brilliantly, expertly, and the ultimate compliment being that although thoroughly unlikable, you actually like him. Girlfriend Melanie is a stoner, preferring to get high and enjoy life rather than the daily grind. She's Ordell's surfer girl, and this is accentuated by Tarantino, often showing only her toes or long legs, and this is deliberately done for effect. Brilliantly played by Bridget Fonda, this is also the first character to hint at, and indeed accentuate, the sexual tension in the film, as her glances and looks at Lewis testify. Lewis is Robert De Niro at his finest. In these early scenes he is virtually mute, either disinterested, uninspired or simply trying to readjust to life outside prison. Often talked at as opposed to being talked to, the opening scene and chicks with guns is equal parts hilarious, surreal and bizarre. The City of Carson Ordell and Lewis visit Max Cherry, Robert Forster to secure a bail bond on Beaumont Livingston, a sublime cameo from Chris Tucker, who's an employee of Ordell's. With Lewis very much in the background, this is a trademark Tarantino scene of close-ups on photos, coffee mugs and other seemingly irrelevant objects. However, it's the framing of Max and Ordell and the superb performances from Forster and Jackson that are to the fore. Four main camera angles are used, 
with quick editing between the four, raising the tension. Either close up or extreme close up on each of the two characters, it's a short scene, but confirms to the audience all we need to know. Samuel L. Jackson as Ordell is again superb, smoking nonchalantly, without a care in the world, relaxed and unfazed. It's pitch perfect and reveals a slightly more likeable layer to that of the first scene. Robert Forster as Max deserves a special mention as, in my humble opinion, it's the performance of his career. Sublime and never flustered, despite the chaos surrounding him, it's a quiet, composed and assured performance. With little or no real narration in the film, Max and Forster's performance become our story narrator, the film's soul and reason, and deliberately so from writer Tarantino. It's clear very early on that Max falls in love with Jackie, and it is her and her alone that can fluster Max, but more of this later. Parking Lot, LA International Airport. After Jackie is stopped by, at the airport by two ATF, alcohol, tobacco and firearms agents, our main cast list is complete. In a supporting role as Mark Dargis is Michael Bowen, and although a supporting role, this is brought to life excellently as Mark is brooding, antagonistic and arrogant. His partner, Ray Nicolette, is expertly performed by Michael Keaton. Geeky, amiable, yet falling in love with Jackie, he is equally forceful in his ATF role. Keaton is excellent if a little underused, however, the role was expanded further, but in a different film entirely, as he reprised this role a year later in Out of Sight by Steven Soderbergh. As the title suggests, this is Jackie Brown's film, and Pam Greer carries the film, propels the film, and is the heartbeat throughout. The screenplay role was written explicitly for her, and her sublime performance justifies this. The shared scenes with Robert Forster are a joy and backed by some of the best music choices in the film. Again, a Tarantino film spills over with great musical choices, but their shared scenes are backed by Natural High, by Bloodstone, and the fantastic Didn't I Blow Your Mind This Time by the Delphonix. What a song, and what a scene. A crime caper, yes, but so, so much more. Subtle and flamboyant, brash and tender, sexual tensions running high throughout, and when released just once, it's a black, comedic highlight of the film. Who's playing who? Who's falling in love with who? The follow-up film to Pulp Fiction was always going to be difficult, nigh on impossible. Not as good as Pulp Fiction, but this fan's favourite. A triumph and a joy. Jackie Brown from 1997, directed by Quentin Tarantino. Rest in peace, Robert Forster. Rest in peace, Robert Forster. As the film comes towards its end, and although I don't want to give a spoiler, I am. Because everything, everything, every fibre of my being screams, don't let her go, Max. Don't let Jackie go. Oh my, what a film. And also, what a book which I couldn't possibly highly recommend enough. Jackie Brown, 1997, directed by Quentin Tarantino. Thanks for watching, thanks for being there. And I live in peace as I always do. And in solidarity as I always do. And as I always do now, I hope the world is spinning and turning in your favour, in your corner of the world. Thank you so much for watching. 
go watch Jackie Brown, go on. And I bet by the end, you're looking at the screen saying, don't let her go, Max, don't let her go. What a film. Peace, everyone.